Are you wanting to max your skill in building in The Sims form? Well, this is a video just for you. Hey, Dag! Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Lord Crumbs, and I just want to say hello to everyone who is a part of the Crumpet family. I guess this is my 400 subscriber, so I thought I would give you some tips and tricks of how to build in The Sims 4. A few of my comments, I do have people asking me, like, how do I do stuff? How do I do split leveling and all that sort of stuff? So I thought, you know what? I thought I would jump in and show you. If there's some sections that you want me to elaborate on then please do subscribe and leave me a comment to let me know what section that you want to find out. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's begin this new and exciting new video today for you. The first things I want to mention are the build cheats. You may know this already so that's why I'm starting them in the beginning. So make sure that testing cheats on is active before using the next few cheats. So we're jumping into bb.moveobjectson and this allows you to place any item in the building by category in any placement overlapping with other items be wary of this though as some items may not work when used when, when placed with move objects on second cheat is bb ignore gameplay unlock entitlement and this just simply unlocks items that are currently locked from the careers if you are building without family and in free build then these items will automatically be unlocked anyway However, if you're playing with a family and you obviously haven't completed the career, these items will be locked until you do that. The next two cheats are my favourites and combine them with bb.moveobjects on using bb show hidden objects and bb show live edit objects. This unlocks loads of hidden items within the build mode category. Using the new filter by debug option and also using the search bar by searching by debug, you'll be able to access a lot of objects that aren't usually accessible to us such as rocks, bridges, you name it, it's probably there. I use this cheat a lot for landscaping and doing like gardens. Tip number four is that you can actually make objects make them larger by pressing the square right hand bracket key. This is very, very useful for making intricate garden designs and I use them a lot for ivy as this helps fill out the space more efficiently. That being said, if you do make items too large, you can actually make items smaller by using the left hand square bracket key. So you can make a tiny little house for your sim to be feel like they're a giant in with this handy little tool. No cheats involved for this one. Likewise, if you want to raise certain objects, you can press Ctrl and 9 and this enables you to raise any item you want into different intervals. You want to free place windows, like not at the standard EA levels, but you want them at the same height. Use this tool, literally, you can make them nice and even at what stages you want, and it is incredible. If you want to use this to fill up shelves, then by all means do it, use it. And likewise, if you do raise a lamp, per se, on a smaller size side table, and as you notice floating, you can also lower it by pressing Control 0, and you can re-lower the items back into their original places. Holding shift while placing floor trims only places them on certain wall pieces and not the rest of the room. Handy for you if you want to use different floor trims for bump outs or little so only sections for one walls if for mezzanines and stuff like that instead of just overlapping and using the whole room as the same floor trim. Also holding shift when placing wallpaper makes it so that you can place wallpaper on all walls instead of individually. The same tip if you want to use it for floor tiles, instead of clicking and dragging or individually placing the floor tiles, you hold down shift and you'll be able to fill up the whole room. After doing walls and floors you notice that there's a bit of floor trim that you that you accidentally placed and you didn't want it there. So what you do, instead of without removing the, all the floor trims, is you press shift and click on the floor trims. With freezes, holding shift it makes you individually place freezes on certain walls instead of again the whole room which makes it more controlled and more precise in building your rooms, making them detailing. Again, if you got it wrong, holding shift and removing them does the same trick. Instead of removing all the, all the freezers in a room, it removes this, that section you are on. Some people do not realize that once you reach a build limit, you can't place any more walls, but if you wanted to make a facade with a building or a rooftop garden using half walls, you can do this and actually place freezers on them, which is something most people do not know about. A little trick I like to play is placing a little fence within the roof and raising the wall height to the tallest one. This allows me to place freezers onto a regular size walls without making the building too tall. This may look odd as you can see here in the front porch as it's quite a lot lower than it initially is meant to be 
but if you place the columns individually it actually works as well you can't duplicate the columns you just have to individually place them which is annoying but as i say i don't know if sims can actually use it but it will be interesting to use this with terrain tools and stuff like that that's about but it makes it interesting because you have to work out what sort of windows you can use with them like you can see that one there is absolutely massive it takes two thirds of the actual wall itself and there's only a certain amount of windows you can use with it but it makes things very interesting and different which people don't realize that you can actually have freezers on regular size walls the next one is placing items in duplicates holding down shift enables us to keep hold of items and being able to duplicate them and this actually applies to roofs as well you can actually duplicate rooms by copying them and then holding down shift and you can place multiples and at times it's the same thing when doing intricate roof designs this also works for duplicating rooms as well if you've got any bump outfits that you like the look of you can easily copy when it comes to terrain tools if you want to make a bigger brush or a smaller brush holding the shift and using the mouse wheel makes the brush larger or smaller and also using control changes the softness of a brush as well so control and mouse wheel perfect if you want to get into those tiny little grooves when building as the bigger size brush EA offer us isn't that big at all or that small to be honest when placing a straight wall tool for walls or fences holding the shift button allows you to create a box or room in one mouse movement when using a room tool, holding shift allows you to place straight walls. If you place these straight walls on a diagonal, then let go of shift, you can actually place diagonal rooms. You can actually have different foundation textures in the same room. Hold shift when placing them. Works wonders for bump outs or chimney parts, as you can have different variations of foundation in one room. Again, making it more diverse, and I'm just showing here, I just, I mean, there's no method to this build, it's just randomly plopping, plopping down foundation parts to just show you what you can achieve. Most people when they want to delete walls they'll either use a sledgehammer tool and some people don't actually realize holding down control whilst you're going along the walls or fences you can actually delete walls and making them into one room. You can use the keys shown here to rotate items around and this makes it more controlled if you wanted to have set angles for rotating objects on if you want to give a build wall tool quickly just press a B button and what no matter what part of the menu you are in if and if you're in buy menu or build menu or you're in roofs or you're in foundations or tables or chairs just pressing the B will automatically bring you back to the wall tool which is super duper handy Pressing T makes your camera view go into a top-down view. This is handy if you want to create a floor plan from above and you can see how the flow of the house is going to be. Holding down Alt allows you to place any item, walls or doors into a free placement so there's no grid. You'll be able to drag those items away from curtains. You can landscape with absolute ease with these like moving plants and everything like that. Having no grid allows us to rotate at what angle, whatever angle we want as well, which makes a lot of freedom. However, if you didn't want to have any as much freedom, but you want the rigidness of some grid, press F5, and this gives us quarter tile placement grid placement, if that makes sense. So you see the dotted lines; it now syncs up with that, as well as the solid solid white lines on the grid, which makes it super duper handy if you want to maximize your space. Pressing plus or minus with a item you pulled out of a menu before placing it, you can actually scroll through the swatches there. When in live mode, picking up items and pressing backspace puts these items into the family storage. Makes it nice and easier instead of pressing the bottom left hand corner. Pressing G actually gets rid of those grid lines, so if you're terrain painting, I always like to remove them. Pressing L changes the day and night cycle, I use this tool a lot when I'm taking photos of my builds and if I wanted to copy some items but I couldn't find them in the menu I just press E and click on the item I want to copy pressing K brings up the sledgehammer tool to delete it and H is our hand tool which makes us be able to grab any item we want if you place an item and want to recolor it pressing R and clicking on the object brings up all the swatches available to us if there's a room in the building I didn't want it and I want to move it somewhere else or rotate it pressing U and clicking on the building enables us to move it and then finally, 
if I wanted to make a feature wall but without pressing wall paint on the individual room or painting the whole room using a shift key, I can hold down Alt and just painting that single wall, which makes it a lot more efficient and tidy. So there we go. There was 36 tips and tricks to make your building experience more efficient. Hopefully you learned a few things if you didn't or if you feel like I've missed anything out then please do let me know. I will be producing more videos where I will show you how I do split level retaining walls and having stairs against foundations and these split levels and stuff like that. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you again next time. Goodbye.